in this episode of Plant Life with Ashley Anita. Is that weird to want to like go stalk someone's plant collection and like invite yourself over to their house? Mm, now that I say it out loud, yeah, that is that is kind of crazy. I'm here with Fela. Thank you so much for letting me come by. You're welcome. And show of course. Your house plant collection. Hey guys, welcome back. So I'm really, really excited about this video. In one of my previous videos, I met up with a new plant friend called Fela, and she owns an online shop called Must Love Plants, where she sells, you know, rare and hard to find plants. And we've been talking, and she's been showing me some pictures of her collection, and I was noticing like, dang, this girl has got some plants. Like, I really want to go over there and look at her collection. Is that is that weird to want to like, go stalk someone's plant collection and like, invite yourself over to their house? Mm, now that I say it out loud, yeah, that is that is kind of creepy, but uh, yeah, that's okay. It worked out okay in the end. It could have gone one of two ways, right? After seeing some of her pictures and stuff of her collection, I asked her, I was like, hey girl, like, can I come and to film a house plant tour because not just her collection like the way she's decorated her house is just so cute and everything i aspire to be she said yeah so that's what this video is is we're gonna go do a house plant tour of of her collection and i couldn't be more excited like i'm excited to share with you guys but i have to say i'm excited to go see these plants myself too so, oh for those of you that don't know me welcome you have found your planty tribe yes we are all crazy plant people here so uh yeah if you like planty stuff this channel's for you and i do post once or twice a week some good planty content and the best way to not miss out is to subscribe so it'll show up in your news feed i'm also on instagram and i post all sorts of planty stuff on there so you may want to give it a follow also if you like giveaways i do giveaways too so i cannot wait any longer let's go meet up with fela and film a house plant tour of her beautiful plant collection can you just say hey <laughs> <laughs> let's start over so I'm here with Fela. Thank you so much for letting me come by You're welcome, and show of course. your houseplant collection. I am so excited. I did manage to get a little sneak peek before you guys and I am completely blown away. House plants do you think you have? Uh, probably well over 100 to 150. And your place is absolutely beautiful. I'm so excited for you guys to see um, her collection. And I mean, I just love all your plant babies. I'm really excited. And a lot of them are wishlist plants of mine. So it was nice to see them in person. Do you want to get started on the tour? Yeah, let's get started. So we'll go ahead and I guess we'll start in here, which is my kid's living room. So excuse all the mess or any toys <laughs> or anything like that. And here comes a child now. So um, first in this room, we'll start with the plant that gives me no trouble that continues to grow constantly through neglect is um, the ZZ plant. I water it maybe once every two or three weeks and it thrives. ZZs are the best. Mm -hmm. Nothing but love from ZZs, right? No, always. I have never had a pest on it one of my favorite plants of all time. So if you're looking for a plant that'll never let you down, this guy right here is the one. So up here we have um, a philodendron micans. Really pretty. I love its leaves, super velvety. And then here we have Ohoya linearis. If you ever wonder what will happen to your plants if you leave them out and they get too cold, <laughs> um, this is what happens. So we have <laughs> A very sad looking philodendron macaulay's um, finale which in the springtime it'll come back and it also is trying to shoot out a new catafil right here so it will come back um, these leaves will probably crisp up and die off but overall the stem is healthy I can always cut it back and 
place it back outside in the springtime and it'll just shoot back up. And behind it is a philodendron prince of orange. In front of it we have some really sad leaf heart leaf ferns here which are super super cute but really really hard to keep up. I've killed all mine. Oh, I'm telling you they're rough but they do they do great outside so if you have um, it in a place that gets a lot of indirect light and that can get rain um, they do they thrive. Here this sad little stump is a white wizard <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> that I left outside and it frosted over and all the leaves fell off but it'll be okay it'll come back in the springtime and here is another offshoot of this Macaulay's finale here that will the plants healthy it's just the leaves took a beating from the cold philodendron xanadu I think it is a xanadu I'm not a hundred percent sure I'm not really quite sure until the leaves start getting more fenestrations um, as to what really this is but it's a great grower I've never had any issues or pests or anything and it thrives also on neglect so great plant to have this is one of my oldest plants this is an aglaonema um, silver bay I just got it at a big box store and it's been put through the ringer too and still continues to grow and stay happy for me. It's really low maintenance. This is an Anthurium super bum back here. Really easy plant as well. Um, a lot thicker leaves and not as delicate as most Anthuriums at, that you see. So it's a really hardy, good option for um, if you're interested in Anthuriums. The infamous fiddle fig right here super temperamental um, when I first got this plant about two years ago I didn't really know the care of it so all of its bottom leaves on the bottom as you can see it's kind of naked down here have dropped but since I moved it over here closer to the window and it gets a lot of light from these grow lights it's probably pushed out from here up this since the spring as long as you don't move it and give it enough light it does well right here is my beautiful Monstera Thai constellation. Um, super mature form. I love all the fenestrations. Um, when I got this plant, it was pretty, the leaves are pretty tattered like it is, but it seems like it's doing great. Um, we have a new leaf. I don't know if you could get it from here, so hopefully, mm. hopefully this guy will be able to pop out soon, but it seems happy over here. He gets humidity and a lot of light from this grow light so seems happy we have a cane begonia here I'm not sure which type of angel begonia this is she's pretty leggy she's reaching for the light but she's bloomed a lot for me um, over the summer and spring I may proper propagate her some this spring make her a little bit more bushy alocasia pink dragon pretty easy care super spider mite prone but overall she does great she's giving me no problems she puts out new growth all the time and then back here was another tragedy from the frost recently is a Madagascar palm it did have a bunch of these really pretty dark green leaves on it but the frost got it so it'll come back in the springtime um, but yeah super super cute cool here we have a philodendron lemon lime I believe or a golden goddess maybe I think it's a lemon lime really easy care plant doesn't give me any trouble just hangs out right here by the window gives a lot of light behind this are just some two little succulents that I picked up I think this is a type type of lithops but I'm not 100% sure it looks like a lithops wood with a little mouth where the blooms would come come through that little mouth there then down here are some more common plants that people can find pretty much anywhere. We have a Pilea um, friendship plant. It does require a little bit more water than some of these other plants, but outside of that, it doesn't give me any pest issues at all and does pretty well in low light conditions. This is a red anthurium that you pretty much can find anywhere. It's only had one bloom for me, but it has really bushed out recently. We have um, two syngoniums and a begonia. I'm not sure what kind of begonia this is. I loved it because it has really silvery sparkly leaves. 
and it usually lives outside too, but I brought it in for the winter. And this, we have a Sagonium Frosted Heart. Beautiful. I love these guys. I can't wait for it to get really tall. And then here is a Sagonium Berry Illusion, I believe. You know, I love the one that, of these, the Sagonium Frost mm -hmm. that you gave to me. I mm -hmm. just, I'm in love with it. So pretty, different than any other Sagonium I've seen. I love this mint color with the pink veining. This little table has a Calathea mosaica, which is an awesome looking plant. I love the mosaic pattern that all these leaves have. It's so beautiful. This is a Calathea that doesn't give as many problems as some of these other ones. The browning of the tips and stuff like that are less common with these, so they're a little mm -hmm. bit more hardy, I've heard. Then behind her is a Calathea um, zebrina. And then we have another ZZ cutting, <laughs> and I had just put it in this old wine bottle, rooted from the stems. Nice. If anybody's interested in how to propagate um, a ZZ plant, just snap off a, a stem and stick it in water, and in about three months, it'll grow roots. <laughs> nice. right. Also on this table, we have one of my most favorite alocasias, alocasia black velvet. I absolutely love this, this alocasia. It's giving me no problems. I know that a lot of people suffer um, from spider mites, but I haven't had any issues with it since I've had it. Here's its newest leaf. Beautiful, almost like lime green veining. Super pretty. It's one of my favorites too, and mm -hmm. my husband actually stole it and put it in his office. Oh, really? <laughs> but I consider that a win, because he's not into plants. Yeah, I mean, that's great. He has a few of his favorites now, and this is one of this them. Is, so next to it is a rattlesnake calathea, which also hasn't given me any issues. It's pretty easy care, plant, easy to find. Yeah, variegated peperomia, super easy care too. Make sure the soil stays a little moist, and it does well. This guy is my white bird of paradise. In the springtime, I'm gonna throw him outside. I hear the more sun they get, um, the more prolific they'll grow, and that's what encourages it to flower. In this little wicker bicycle, we have a um, really large raven ZZ plant, which is very similar to the green form. Um, gives me no problem. I water it maybe every two to three weeks. Doesn't require a, a ton of light either, which is which is nice. So. This is so cute what you have it in as well. Mm -hmm. That is adorable. Oh, I love it. I'll turn it off, let's see what it looks like. Yeah, that's better. Turn it off? Okay. These are cool though, what are these? Just Amazon. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just Amazon clip. They clip on here? Mm -hmm. My very, um, my very first grow I'd ever had. Wow. Mm -hmm. And does a good job? It does great, yep. We have a um, Moonlight Sansevieria or Dracaena here, which I think is so beautiful. I love the silver minty color um, leaves on it. And then here we have a Whale Friend Sansevieria, Watermelon Peperomia, which I did just water it, but if it does not get adequate amount of water, it loves to um, droop its leaves like this, but super cute little plant. A begonia that was left outside during the frost. So we have three different angel wing begonias in here. Um, of course, you cannot tell that. Then we have an alocasia poly, which is pretty common, super easy alocasia, nice thick leaves. Um, this is a brand new leaf, so if you wonder what it look like when they first unfurl, super pretty, dark green, love it. The back of the leaves are really pretty too, this purple, this really dark purple color. Gorgeous. I love it. Over here we have a Peruvian cactus. A funny story about this cactus, my kids collected a caterpillar outside. I found it eating away at this cactus probably three months later. So, <laughs> I had a bunch of succulents in this pot with this cactus, and I was wondering why all the succulents were just dying. But come to find out, there was a caterpillar in there that got big and fat off all the succulents and oh, no. the cactus. Mm -hmm. it was just away. <laughs> I can't believe it didn't kill it, so. This is a Fern cactus or tropical cactus does not enjoy being cold, I can tell you that. He's doing well, doesn't require a lot of water, 
ordering maybe once once a month or so. So pretty. This big guy over here also got left outside in the frost. He was much larger. I had to chop him because they all got frozen. Um, this is a type of orchid cactus. I'm not really quite sure the name of it, but super pretty, super easy care. He'll bloom big white, white flowers. So I'll be excited to see that one day. We have uh, Peperomia started out as two tiny little cuttings about this big, I guess last spring and it has sprouted into this in just a few months. So super cute, love it. We have some type of, I guess maybe an aloe or a succulent. I just thought it was cute and it would fit in that little that little planter there. That planter is cute. Love it. It's so cute. Here I have a stem from my variegated umbrella plant that lives outside. I didn't know if it would root or not, and apparently the stems, so if you are interested in one of these guys, just the stems do propagate. And then up here we have a variegated lipstick plant that I got from a big box store too. Super easy care, and it's only bloomed one time for me so far. It seems pretty happy, I'm getting a lot of sun from this window. We have two Peruvian night blooming cactuses. Um, they haven't bloomed for me, but hopefully one day I'll see them bloom. But they are awesome. I love them. I love them, I love them, I love them. So pretty easy care as well. They don't ever hardly water them. So they do need a lot of sunlight out here to encourage the blooming, but I like them in here. They seem, they seem to be okay. Here on the other side of this cactus, we have a ginormous um, philodendron xanadu. This is what a xanadu looks like um, mature. So super cool and different looking. I think that it is so beautiful. I'm in love with this plant. I love how you decorated your home. Thank you. Thank you. It's so well done. We just try to um, find where the plants fit the best and <laughs> <laughs> work our way around that. So behind the xanadu, we have a um, Dracaena marginata, which reminds me of something from a Dr. Seuss book. Um, that was my main reason to get this. She has been with me for about two years now. I probably one of my most favorite plants. Down here we have a Domino Peace Lily, which I actually saw them in the big box store up the street from here recently, which I thought was really cool. Up here, we have just a cutting of golden pothos here that's been rooting in a vase for about six months. Here we have a Epiprimnum Cebu Blue, which seemed to be really super popular. As it grows up a tree or a pole, um, the leaves get larger and get big fenestrations in them. So it'd be interesting to see what happens to this guy over time. So pothos Enjoy. So pretty. You're so, yeah, I really, really like these a lot. Um, if you want something different than the typical jade pothos or golden pothos, this is a great option. We have a Hoya Retusa here. She seems to be happy here. I give her a lot of light. I've read that these enjoy cooler weather to bloom, um, so I don't know how much how cool she gets over here since it's pretty warm in this room but she seems happy she's growing she's grown probably about six or eight inches since i've got her and next up we have a hoya pubic calyx i think you have a giant one of as well they grow fast they grow super fast all these tendrils yeah my... have happened since i have got her and yeah. she taking off. It's a happy type of Hoya. It is. And if you want something that is different with the splashy and they also, when they first emerge, I can't really find one now. Here, it's probably a good one. When a new leaf emerges, it gets this really dark, dark, almost black color when the leaf first emerges. I love that. Over here in this corner, we have a Philodendron Pastazanum. Mm, so beautiful. So pretty. And it seems to be happy over here in this corner. It gets, you know, a little bit of light over here from this window. 
and I guess if it wasn't happy it would not be producing a little leaf here so we have a new new baby that's about to pop up here soon you have it in sphagnum moss um just the top so it is in soil I have sphagnum just to try to keep the moisture you know at a, at a good level um it's a good idea mm -hmm. most of my aeroids i try to have a little bit of sphag in the top um just to kind of keep the, the 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 moisture level consistent in in the soil so some type of euphorbia is an african milk plant it was one of my very first and it's not a cactus but quote unquote cactuses mm -hmm. was she was one of my first ones um she when I first got her, she had the spines come out as leaves first, and then they and they turn into those little spines. So, and we have a holiday cactus here. I'm not going to say whether it's a Thanksgiving or a Christmas because I'm not sure. So we're just going to call it a holiday cactus. I like the white blooms. I do too. And then up here we have a golden pothos. One reason why your leaves turn yellow is. Inconsistent watering is a huge factor for leaf color and of course nutrients, but they tend to turn yellow if they go through a dry spell and then you water them real good, then you get some yellowing leaves. So okay. That's what's happening with this one right now. Hopefully one day I'll be able to get this thing to trail all the way down this wall, which will be nice. It looks really cool. I love how it's already going. Mm -hmm. It'll be there before you know it. I hope so. We'll see. Blue, Aww. spruce, blue. He's alive? He's alive. He's in a pot, yes. <laughs> That's awesome. I figure since I'm obsessive about plants that I get a Christmas tree this year that wasn't cut. So maybe we can plant it or throw it outside um, after I know. the season's over. I couldn't so. let, I just, it broke my heart every year so I got an artificial tree. Mm -hmm. But I love the pot um, I idea. Love it. Yeah, so. It is in a huge pot, super heavy. And I like your I decorations like on it. Um, so cute. Thank you. So, yep, it's a potted plant along with the rest of them. Up here we have a staghorn fern on each side of this mirror here. That looks so good. Only thing that I've had an issue with is I get these, and if anybody knows what these are, please let Ashley know but, and I don't know if I can find any, but I get these like tiny little, and I don't see any in here right now. I guess they're a type of aphid. They're not mealybugs, they're not spider mites, but you can kind of tell the damage that it's caused, these, this yellowing of these leaves. They, I guess they suck the juices out just like any of the other pests. Here's a good leaf to show you of what it has caught, the damage it has caused to the staghorn. Aww. And I don't see any on here. I guess maybe my treatment actually worked, but I had to treat it three or four times before they were able to go away. I had to use a pesticide to be able to get rid of it, a, a soap. Down here is, I think that it is a large basket of silver splash. Um, I thought it was, I bought it as an exotica, but the the pattern of the silver on it doesn't look like an exotica to me. I have a cutting that is um, Scandapsis Silver Splash that looks identical to this. This guy right here is a um, burgundy rubber tree. Does not like to be in direct sunlight, so this is what happens. Good to know. Good to know. Um, like any other ficus, it'll it'll drop its leaves if it's not happy. So. I don't really move it a whole lot as long as it's in an area with, that receives a lot of sun, indirect sun, mind you, that um, it'll be happy. So. Tineke down here. It seems um, a lot hardier and not as fussy as Fiddle Fig or the Burgundy Rubber Tree. It seems a lot happier than the other ones do. Below it we have a Calathea medallion, which is super finicky, so it has a typical browning tips that most calatheas love to get if you don't get it watered in time. Ficus optisma. I like it because it has the dark and light variegation on the leaves. Too. So pretty. Moving into what I consider my plant room. <laughs> and where I love to just sit and stare at everything. 
have a Hoya Carii, just the green form. It's grown out this for me in the past couple months and then this stem with these little funky little wannabe heart-shaped leaves on them. <laughs> Down here we have a, another angel wing begonia I really like. When I first got it, these, these spots were a whitish silvery, but if you look close, it has like a pink tint to them. Yeah. So since since I've moved it in, um, in most of the foliage have grown on in my care, the spots have become a little bit more pinky. So I think that's pretty. This is my ginormous begonia maculata. <laughs> so if anybody's having any issues with their begonias, give it a humidifier and it'll take off. Here we have a pitcher plant. I love carnivorous plants but they're really difficult to keep alive if they're not in a terrarium setting. We have one little baby pitcher right here. He probably needs some water, but they can only have distilled water, so, and I'm fresh out, so he'll have to um, be patient. We have this guy here, Medilia, Medilia Gregory um, Humbali. I think that's what it's called. I love this plant. It's so sparkly. So sparkly. It has these weird little crystals. I don't know if you've heard um, or read of like they form, some plants form these little crystals, which are not pests, by the way. A lot of people think it's a pest or something. It's not. So it's something that the plant forms itself. Next to it, we have a Peperomia frost. Up here, we have this really pretty Philodendron Giganthium variegata. Oh, that's beautiful. Have the little baby coming out here. Oh, congrats. <laughs> um, then we have little tiny baby pink princess. I think her variegation is gorgeous. And by the way, I've killed this plant twice, almost. So I'm pretty proud of this one. You have Ms. Bagnum? Mm-hmm. Need some water, but seems happy. What do you have most of your plants in? It varies? It, it does, it varies. So I do make my own um, soil for all my aeroids. Most plants, especially with these thick roots, these climbing, um, vining plants, seem to do better in LECA or soil that has a lot of pumice or rock or cocoa core. But any of these small plants like this, like the small pink princess, and, that, and I think I'll, I'll show you some of my propagations later, um, they do well and seem to root the best in, in sphagnum. I would like to transition all of my aeroids and anthuriums into LECA in time, but that's just going to be a huge, a huge feat for me. So right now they seem, they seem happy in what they're in, but I would like to transition to LECA. Satin, jade satin, I think. Pretty. One of my pride and joy. We have a philodendron UPI. Wow. Little caterpillar here. And here's that sap that people like to talk about. Sticky sap. Oh yeah, I see mm -hmm. that. We have an anthurium um, variegated vitiliforium, I think, vitiliforium. Um, I haven't mastered the care for this guy yet. He doesn't seem to like humidity as much as some of the other anthuriums, so that's why I have him here. He's somewhat close to my humidifier, so he does get some humidity. Um, but I love him for his paddle-shaped leaves, and he has put out these two, three, since I've gotten him, so. And then here's a Scandapsis argirius up here, which was sold to me as a silver lady. So the leaves are the so leaves cute. Are, and, they, and they seem smaller. Yeah, they're little. Mm -hmm. And I have heard if you, these will shingle, if you give it a surface for it to shingle on. This is, this is real life. Um, so you see damaged leaves, broken leaves. I have um, children and animals, so, you know. Four dogs. Four dogs. So, you know, these, these plants take a beating sometimes. <laughs> Under this Peperomia frost, we have a um, Stromanthe um, magic star here who has seen better days, but I rescued it from the brink of death. So, you know, I can't ask for too much more from this guy. And then next to him is a beautiful Philodendron 
Choco. So pretty. Brand new leaf that just put so out. So red. Oh, so gorgeous. Show the back side of the leaf. Aww. Over here, just a regular Hoya Carnosa green form. This is all new. So I'm assuming that it's, I don't know if it has to do with the lighting or not, why these leaves are darker than the rest of the plant. But this is the only Hoya that has bloomed for me. Down here we have a Sissus Discolor. He gets watered. I gave him, I gave him a trellis to climb on. He gets humidity all the time. He gets light. He just is, he's not happy with me ever. So I just let him do his own thing. But these leaves tend to dry out pretty quickly and often. This is a philodendron, your best sense, just the green form. It does look like it has a little bit of irrigation in it here, but it just be, it could just be the leaf of it. Cute. I love the redstone. I do too, it's so pretty. Back here we have a philodendron radicum, radicums. This is a really juvenile form. Once it grows larger, those fenestrations um, really start to break apart, so. And then we have a Monstera Peru back here. Wow, look how happy it is. It looks a little dark on my camera, but here we go. Nice. And we have a Philodendron Gloriosum, which has seen better days. A lot of this is done, uh, was done in shipping. So I think once it sprouts a new leaf, um, this leaf will probably turn yellow and die off. So this is an Alocasia Purple Sword. Cool. She's a mame. The stems are really cool. Oh, they're like oh, flat. So they're flat with the with the, the ruffles awesome. here. But I think it's a mame. So pretty. Gorgeous. We got Australis here. Philodendron Jose Bueno here. Pretty. And then we have Palladium that's just doing its thing. <laughs> um, Florida Ghost, which I think needs a lot more light to get that white minty color. But here's kind of a, a mint what it meant means for a Florida ghost. Hoya Crimson Queen. This is what their new leaves look like. So pink. Hot pink, yeah. So this is a Philodendron Plowmanii. Mm, pretty. Just gorgeous. Hindu rope that's variegated. Or Hoya Compacta Variegata. Then we have some shamrocks here. I have a purple shamrock and a green one here. And this is a Scandapsis Silver Splash. Um, this is what is confusing me with mine because mine seems to look, have that pattern. So that's why I think it's a Silver Splash. Paglionema over here, I don't know which type it is. But I love the pink stripe on it. We have a really huge Monstera Adansoni. Behind the giant um, string of hooks, <laughs> we have Hoya Wyetii. Up here, we have a Hoya Kentiana Variegata that I'm trying to get really sun stressed to get this pink in the variegation. We got a Hoya Sunrise. I'm pretty. We have. I'm not really quite sure what this is. I think it's one of those, those plants that have the big flowers that stink. The lifesaver? Yes, a lifesaver plant. Okay. Yeah, it looks so, like mm -hmm. it. I love yes. your pots too, by the way. Like, Thanks. They're the best planters. This is a Hoya obovata variegata the, um, with the variegation in the middle. And this guy is not rooted. He's just in sphagnum that I have to water him probably every three days or so to encourage um, mm -hmm. root growth. But. Right, so this is um, Hoya Callistophylla and Hoya Compacta Monolau, the variegation on the inside. Look at that planter. That is wild. 
<laughs> so fun. <laughs> then up high, uh, we have a um, Hartley philodendron, which I think is maybe a cream splash or a Rio. I'm not 100% sure. Um, I got it as a combination plant, so it didn't, it was just labeled um hartley philodendron but oh yeah it, it has, does look like it's definitely like a real or a white stripe yeah white stripe maybe not 100 percent sure but yeah definitely love it good find alocasia friedeck i think it's the syngonium mojito or army cool um this is philodendron sagittifolium and then I have some cuttings over here from that Exotica or the Silver Splash, whichever one it is. And then in here we have my terrarium plants. All right, in this terrarium, we have a couple Jew orchids and a couple um, rare begonias. We have a pitcher plant over here. We have a Begonia Julau over here. We have a Stephania erecta, just the caudex, just so eventually it'll sprout out from that little nub here. And on the table we have a Pilea peppermoides. It has a couple little babies in it. On my printer, we have a variegated alocasia. Then we have a Hoya Compacta, just the green form. And then we have um, Silver Glory String of Hearts. Oh, cute. And then some of your favorite cactuses, which I can't remember the names of them. Astrophytum. There you go, Astrophytum. It's a Capricorn. Oh, there you go. I learned something new today, too. <laughs> we have a Deschidia Million Hearts Variegata. This one's really cute. Love it. Pretty blue cactus there. Love it. We have a philodendron dark lord here, which I think is a dark lord. It could be a hybrid of a dark lord just because the leaf shape is a little bit different than what I think a dark lord should look like. But either way, still pretty. We have a desert rose. If anybody's aware, this is what happens to desert roses in the wintertime, all their leaves drop or if they get spider mites, all of their leaves drop as well. Aww. So <laughs> it has two things fighting against it. Otherwise the plant will be fine. It'll come back next year. We have a ghost cactus or ghost euphorbia here, um, a spiral cactus, a variegated apuntia here, and this is called a pregnant onion. Oh, cool. <laughs> have another variegated euphorbia here. Nice. Then we have the famous booby cactus right there and a, <laughs> and a booby planter. I love it. Variegated string of hearts. Another astrophyllum. Oh, cute. That one's Bishop's cap. Adorable. It's so pretty. I like it at the elephant planter it's in. Adorable. Thanks. We have Hoya curtsii. Um, spider plant. I do not. I have no idea what type it is, but it has a ton of little babies here. Mm -hmm. We have another just regular string of hearts here. Dragon's Jade right there. We have a Raphidophora tetrasperma, which I have propped tons of propagations off of. Here is some propagations right here. Just propagating in water. This guy, Amidrium zippa, zippa, zippolinium, zippolinium, <laughs> but he's also just propping in some water here. I love the way the leaves look. I know there's, I love the fenestrations. Yeah. We have a philodendron brandy here. And then my large Monstera deliciosa. Um, some Ripsalis here. I don't know which type it is red maranta plant. On the top of my Ikea greenhouse, we have a couple spider plants. So we just have a regular spider plant that you see anywhere. And then we have a 
the curly spider plant, or I think some people call it the bonnie. Marble Queen, Pothos, and an Ethereum Fruffles. <laughs> I love that name. Mm -hmm. Inside this cabinet, um, top shelf, we have an Ethereum Crystallinum. A blue oil fern, which I am absolutely in love with. Wow. The sheen on this is so cool. It's like iridescent. So we got Ring of Fire here. We got Philodendron Burl Marks variegated. Oh, nice. These are all so beautiful. Oh my gosh. Thank you. We got Anthurium Frigidii here. I love that, the leaf shape on those. No, I think there's a dark form and either just a regular or silver form. And this is the silver or regular form. Um, the dark form, you can't really see the, the veinations, not as, it doesn't stand out quite as much. Philodendron varicosum. Mm. Beautiful. Just a baby. And then a the little sad leaf. <laughs> we have an Anthurium Crystal Hope. A new leaf that just unfurled. And then we have an Aglanemia Pictum Tricolor, which I just discovered had root rot, so I'll probably lose this leaf. Um, hopefully it'll make a comeback in this Lekka. Alocasia Zebrina Reticulata. All right, so here's a Queen Anthurium here. So beautiful. The leaves are super almost leathery-like. Wow. What do you have this one in? just an aeroid mix, whatever. I haven't repotted her yet because I'm a little bit too scared to do that. So <laughs> she seems happy in the mix she's in now. I just, it's just an aeroid mix. Um, looks like it has a ton of perlite in it. So I'll have to repot her probably in the springtime. And over here we have a Monstera Skeleto, um, formerly known as um, Epipromoides. This is its newest leaf. Beautiful. And then down here is nothing too impressive, just a couple cuttings. We have an uh, Amidrium Silver. I had um, three of these guys and the other two got root rot, so I'm hoping I'll be able to save him. Just a couple more cuttings of my Enjoy, um, some Adansoni cuttings, and we have a silver sword in here somewhere, right here. Pretty. And this begonia that I have no idea what the name of it is, but I love the hairy stems. And as the leaves mature, the leaves get darker and darker to almost this black color. So it's my Ikea greenhouse. It's amazing. Yeah, so this is the room I keep most of my inventory in. Um, I also have a shelf over here that has that houses a lot of my Hoyas and succulents and stuff like that that need a lot of light. I have a grow light here, an LED grow light here that um, provides a lot of light for these guys. So I keep them in here. And usually this is all filled up with stuff. So this top shelf here is where I house um, a lot of my Hoya cuttings and succulents and things and propagations that need a lot of light to root. I have some Hoya cuttings here. I'm just now getting into Hoyas, but here's a cutting of some recent ones that I've got. Nice. This is, looks like a Callistophylla, but I think it's a Finita, it starts with an F, I'm not really quite sure, but I'll let you know which one it is. Here we have a Hoya Obscura, awesome. which apparently will get sun stressed over time, so I'm hoping for that. We have a Hoya Coriana. Coriana. Pretty. And then this is what a Stephania erecta looks like once it sprouts. A lot of people I've seen put it, put them on those round or shaped, like heart shaped trellises, and it will actually vine around the trellis. Aww. These are just some succulents I brought in from outside since it's gotten cold. I want to be able to give them 
as much light as possible in inside conditions so this is where they're living for the time being and until come spring this is a Hoya Embracada which is a shingling Hoya Oh, I love these. Ignore the ignore the little mold. Sorry, guys. But super cool looking Hoya. So as this grows, if you give it a moss pole, it will sh start to shingle. Otherwise, what happens is as it grows, it'll start to fold in on itself, kind of like a taco. So you can see inside the little root oh, so where cool. it would attach. These are my favorites. So you have him covered up for a little extra humidity mm -hmm. yeah i just got him recently and he was pretty dry so i wanted to encourage growth on him so i just have him in a little plastic bag hopefully he'll start to sprout nice. new growth here soon succulent planter here that i brought in from outside hopefully i will not kill it during the winter time we'll wait and see here we have a monstera stilte picana it's a cutting that's also rooting in spag moss. And you can see. Wow. Mm -hmm. We have a Monstera Peru here, another one that I, I'm giving to a friend of mine. And then we have a cutting of my brandy, my philodendron brandy. And then these are juvenile philodendron white knights. I'm not sure if it'll ever get variegation. I'm thinking it will eventually, but it's so young that we'll just have to wait and see. But they have really cool candy cane like stems and these are up on the side as well I have a monstera tie constellation i have a couple of these this is the one that has the most variegation these are all for sale these are all for sale on the site yes they're all up all right. right now and then for people who live in the charlotte area if they don't want shipping you can they can yep. meet you yep and i also do delivery at no shipping cost so the shipping will be refunded and they look absolutely beautiful and i wish i could keep them all i know we have a couple monstera tie constellations i think there's four in this bunch of plants right here um so i have those available they range from anywhere from about two feet to almost three feet here. A really large Florida Beauty. So pretty. Wow. Oh, this variegation is gorgeous. The other two leaves are just as pretty. They look like padatum leaves. They're just all green. Here's the second leaf. But its baby is going to be another variegated leaf. Oh yeah, look, you can see. You can see what the variegation, the variegation on, on its caterpillar already. Mm -hmm. And then under the Florida Beauty, we have a philodendron strawberry shake. So pretty, oh my gosh, it's so pink. This newest baby, and it's, it does the same, it, it's variegation comes out just like a Florida Beauty does, the like Polaroid, I think they call it a Polaroid variegation, okay. where the variegation will um, fade in over time. So it starts like this, and then as the plant matures or the leaf matures, the variegation starts the leaf starts to turn a darker green and then you can see this pink creamy variegation um, that'll be in the leaves in the future so you can see where the darker green is will be and then this cream is all that white pink cream variegation gorgeous this is the newest leaf it just unfurled maybe about two weeks ago wow next to it we have a couple of philodendron um, white princess so it's a brand new leaf and these are the stems the stems are a little bit different than a white wizard and a white knight so the white knight has that candy cane dark burgundy and white stems these variegated green stems with the pink yes yeah, mm -hmm. and I have two of those here's the other guy not as variegated as that one chunky variegation but it does have the dapple spotty variegation throughout all, the entire plant and then behind it i have a white wizard which i can show you the difference in its stems as well so the white wizard has a more rounder leaf form stems are green and white variegated there's no pink there's no burgundy there's no red so it's just green and white totally back here are some of my own personal plants i have some monstera elbow cuttings here that i'm waiting to root up that hopefully will root up for me 
Back here we have another carnivorous plant and we have an orchid back here, some Epiprenum pinnatum variegata down here. They're not super high there, highly variegated. But then we have a Alocasia pharaoh's mask. Melanochrysum, <laughs> which was an import this summer. She had four ginormous, probably two foot leaves when I first got her. She developed root rot and all of her leaves turned yellow and fell off. So now we are finally six months later starting to get some type, some type of leaf growth back. So we have this guy trying to unfurl right now. But look at that stem it's on. Like that vine is thick. I hope that it'll produce some <laughs> some nice some size nice leaves. leaves. We'll see. It'll probably be a really thick stem with these tiny little leaves on it. But whatever. I'm gonna love it regardless. It's actually doing two at one time, which is kind of which is kind of awesome. cool. And then down here we have a unicorn plant. We have a Monstera adansoni variegated the elbow. He's also up on the site. <laughs> so pretty. Wow. I have, that will be ready in a few months. Um, we have a Monstera Peru variegated. It's pushing out a new leaf right here. Oh, beautiful. Another variegated um, Adansonia is the mint version which is a more stable variegation is variegation throughout the it's more of a green variegation but it's variegation throughout all the leaves so you wouldn't ever have to worry of it reverting what else can i show i'll show my prop box and then i guess that'll be about it just a little tupperware container wow. we have um some mikan's cuttings from my plant out in the living room we have um, this is some, this is an Epiprimnum pinnatum cutting. We have a Philodendron Burl Marks Fantasy cutting here. And then under all this moss right here, it does not, it does not want to root. We have a Monstera Obliqua runner. <laughs> wow. It has been sitting in here for about two months. It has this tiny, tiny little root on it. I don't even know if you can see it. So I'm praying that it'll do something for me, but we'll just have to wait and see. <laughs> You'll have to let us know. I'll let you know, keep you updated. Uh, we almost missed this guy. So back here that I totally just ignored, um, which is not, this is my own personal, these personal ones that usually stay outside. I had to bring inside for winter time. We have a variegated banana tree. She's not super variegated. That's why I keep her, but I still think that she's pretty. Look at that so leaf. that's awesome. It's the, um, it's not the Florida variety. It's the Musa I, I, A, I, A, A, okay. I think. And then we just have a white plumeria back here. Beautiful. Thank you so much for coming along with me to look at all of my million of house plants that I have. Hope you enjoyed it and I didn't bore you to death with all of my plants in my collection, but appreciate it. Also, if you're interested in anything that um, you saw um, in my shop, please don't hesitate to reach out and contact me. Yeah, thank you so much, Shayla. You're welcome. Oh my gosh. Her collection was just... I dream for my collection to be like that one day. She was so nice to let me come to her house, meet her family and her dogs, and film a plant tour of all of her plant babies. So please, if you would for me, go to her Instagram and give her a follow and let her know what you thought of her plant collection because I will say this, like I know on YouTube it doesn't feel like real people and stuff. It's not easy. To, to put yourself out there and she was such a sport to put herself out there and let us you know experience her plant collection and I knew that it would look awesome and that you guys would love it oh and guess what else she gave me a little present I told her not to <laughs> I said please don't please don't but I can only resist so long when somebody offers me plants it 
It is a variegated Monstera and it is an Albo, of which I don't have one. <laughs> she gave me a Monstera Albo cutting. <laughs> Look at that monster aerial root. And it, as you can see, like the little white dots, like those are roots forming. I mean, too much, right? That's just too much. But again, twist my arm hard enough and I'll take your plants. <laughs> oh my gosh, look. I'm in heaven. Well, anyways, I'm gonna let you guys get back to your day. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. That's the best way to not miss out on videos. I have a ton of content I need to edit and so lots of videos coming out. Look me up on Instagram as well. Hope you guys have a fantastic rest of the day. I will be seeing you soon. Bye.